Amen. So tonight, I want to uh, start a series on the seven miracles of the book of John. I need a miracle. Do you? But the question is not, do you need a miracle? The question is, do you believe in miracles? Actually, if you believe in God, how many of you believe in God? Then by default, you believe in miracles. It is unthinkable that the Creator, having such incredible power, should subsequently be unable to move miraculously upon His own creation. Is the clock stronger than the clockmaker? No, indeed, God is not a helpless onlooker to the work of his hands. The psalmist declares, the heavens are thine, the earth is thine, for the world and the fullness thereof thou hast founded them. Psalm 89 and 11. Robert G. Lee, a great preacher who is now in heaven, has rightly observed, God is not a bewildered bellhop running up and down the corridors of the hotel he created, trying to find the right key. <laughs> oh, if you believe in God, he is the God of the impossible. He is the God of the resurrection. Amen. He is the God of Genesis 1-1 when in the beginning, God, there's where your miracles started. He's the God of creation. He's, he created the world, listen, not in 7,000 years or 7 million years. Uh, don't you believe that stuff? Uh, he created the world in seven days, 24 hours. The evening evening and the morning were the first day. Very clear in scripture that God made the world in seven. He could have done it in seven seconds. Uh, what about the Red Sea opening? What about the axe head floating? What about a man had died, a preacher had died, and he had rotted, and his bones were showing, and somebody else had died, and they didn't have time to bury him, so they they threw him on the side of, uh, in a graveyard. Well, the grave had been messed up, and so they actually threw the dead man on the bones of the old preacher, and and as soon as the dead man hit the bones of the old preacher, the dead man rose to life. Amen. I like to be around a good preacher that's on fire for, for God. Amen. Uh, oh, he did. He made the lame to walk. Uh, he made the deaf to talk. Uh, he opened the blinded eyes. Uh, and in the book of Revelation, two prophets are going to preach and the whole world is going to see them and they're going to die. But on the third day, they're going to raise up on national television. Uh, I'm just telling you from Genesis to Revelation. One little boy said from geniuses to revolutions, <laughs> from geniuses to revolutions, uh, there is a miracle working God. Do you believe it tonight? Why don't you give him a hand of praise tonight? <clears throat> the Bible is full of miracles. In fact, Dr. Terry Trammell said that not only is the Bible full of miracles, but the Bible itself is a miracle. When you think of those 66 books of Scripture, all of the 40 different authors, you can't even get four people to agree on anything. Uh, uh, but the 40 different authors, uh, when you think of the Bible's preservation, when you think of the attempts to destroy it, it is not only, Dr. Trammell said, it is not only a book of miracles, uh, it is a miracle book. Uh, can you say amen tonight? And in that miracle book, there's the book of John. And you talk about miracles in the book of John. Seven miracles that the missionary hit on this morning, and every one of them was like a hammer in my spirit, and I just felt it. I took pictures of the slides, and I want to expound upon those. It's just stirring in my spirit. Look at, uh, before I get you to stand, look at John chapter 20, verses 30 through 31, because when you think of the book of John, you think of John the author, and he made this observation. He said in John chapter 20, verses 30 through 31, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, listen to this, which are not written in this book. So there are more miracles that are not even recorded in Scripture. In verse 31, but the ones that are written that you might what? Believe. It didn't say that you might believe in miracles. It said that you might believe in who? Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing on Him, that you might have life through His name. Adrian Rogers points out that the word signs in this passage has great significance. It is plural in the Greek, which actually means uh, a miracle with a message or a miracle with a meaning, not just a miracle to have a miracle, but a miracle with a special lesson 
tied to it. It is a sign. Every miracle in the book of John has lessons, has signs. Uh, G. Campbell Morgan said, and I'm quoting still from Adrian Rogers, he said that every parable Jesus spoke was a miracle of instruction. I love that. And every miracle Jesus performed was a parable of instruction. I'm going to repeat that. Every miracle, uh, excuse me, every parable that Jesus spoke was a miracle of instruction, and every miracle uh, performed was a parable for instruction. Uh, there are meanings uh, to these miracles in the book of John. Each of these seven miracles uh, of Jesus shows not only his power over nature, but his redeeming power over sin, death, hell, and the grave. These miracles point clearly to the wonderful truth that Jesus is God's answer to our deepest needs. Uh, he is God's answer to our disappointments, our doubts, our disabilities, our desire, desires, our despair, our darkness, our death, miracles in the book of John. Uh, bring it on, Lord. Uh, we've had two prayer revivals, uh, and I believe it is time uh, for us to arise uh, and believe for miracles. Would you stand with me tonight? Speaking of arise, would you arise and turn to John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. I don't know about you, but I need a new beginning. Uh, every now and then, I need a reset. Uh, every now and then, I my water Get my wine gets diluted down to water, and I need him to turn the water back into wine. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. I'm getting ahead of myself. Would you say, uh, would you, if you're there, would you say amen? John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And the third day, something always significant about the third day. Do a study through the scripture. I heard Jensen preach this. You and I were together. I know where it was. It was in uh, Virginia Beach at a minister's conference in 1999. I was pastoring right here. This was Living Waters. You were pastoring over at the old Westmoreland. And we were at that meeting together in Jensen Franklin. We had our picture made. And you photobombed it. <laughs> he knew Jensen Franklin. And I didn't. And I was trying to get the picture. And by the time I got the picture, Brother Jerry comes up and Jensen forgets me. And he talks to Pastor Jerry there. <laughs> You, you didn't remember that, do you? <laughs> I got proof of it. Amen. <laughs> but he talked about the third day. I'll never forget it. So there's something always happening on the third day. There was a marriage. Now get that. The third day, uh, there's resurrection coming. On the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Both the Jews were, uh, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, somebody say they wanted it. The mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto his servants, whatever he says unto you, do it. Turn around and tell one of his servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Amen. Amen. Verse 6. And there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. And Jesus said, said unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them where? To the brim. Amen. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. And when the rule of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. And the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said, every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when you have some have well drunk that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine, until now, Woo, the James Lincoln, the best is yet to come. Amen. And verse 11, everybody read this out loud because I'm going to come back to this at the end of the message. Uh, everybody read out loud. Ready? I want to hear your loudest voice. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples uh, believed on him. Father, manifest your glory. Thank you for the seven miracles of the book of John. Thank you for the message we heard this morning. Uh, and over these next few weeks, God, uh, let us have have great miracles. Uh, and Lord, we need a miracle of a new beginning. Uh, let it happen tonight and we'll give you praise. And everybody said amen. And turn around and tell somebody, get ready, get ready, get ready. Now give the Lord a hand of praise here tonight. He inhabits the praises of his people.
Some years ago when Johnny Carson was the host of the Tonight Show, he had a little eight-year-old boy on the Tonight Show. The boy was there because he had rescued two of his friends in a coal mine outside his home in West Virginia. And as Johnny Carson uh, questioned the boy, it became apparent to him that the audience, and to the audience, that he was a Christian. So he asked him if he attended Sunday school. And the little boy said he did. And then Johnny Carson said, well, what are you learning in Sunday school? And last week, the boy replied, our lesson was about when Jesus went to a wedding and turned the water into wine. And of course, the audience just died with laughter because everybody wants to, to use this scripture as the, the, the excuse to drink wine, which is, which is not what it's teaching. But, uh, but Johnny Carson kept a straight face. And then he said, and trying to nudge him on, he said, and, and, and what did you learn from that story? Now, we know what Johnny Carson was after, right? <laughs> but the little boy kind of squirmed in his chair and it was apparent that he hadn't really thought about it. But then he broke into a smile and said, I know what it was teaching. And he said, what? He said, it's teaching that if you're going to have a wedding, make sure you invite Jesus. <laughs> oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Well, you know, this, this miracle, can't. there's so much in this miracle of the wedding at Cana, and, and yes, you do need to invite Jesus to the wedding, and the importance of marriage, and, and having God there, and, and blessing, but I want to give you three things this afternoon that I kind of pulled together just quickly from some of my thoughts. Um, I believe this miracle talks about compassion, point number one, that it talks about compassion. You know, every time Jesus was moved with compassion, miracles follow. And God help us to have a compassion to those who are unlike us. God help us to have compassion to those who are without, the sick and the hurting uh, and the lost and, and those that are going through trials and tests. And, and so many times we can be kind of really wrapped up in our needs and what we're, we get so busy, but we need to take time every now and then and, and realize that there are people in the world who are suffering and people in the world who are going through uh, terrible things and, and they need miracles. And I know I need some miracles, but, but I believe when we're moved with compassion, uh, that that is really love in action is his compassion uh, and you will find uh, miracles. And, and you see, you see this couple that was getting married, uh, uh, he had compassion upon them. You know, in those days, running out of wine at a wedding was not a minor social inconvenience. You just couldn't run down to Walmart or somewhere and get a few more bottles of wine. You see, in the first century, running out of wine at a wedding was a big taboo. Uh, it was not just a social inconvenience. Uh, it was really a social disgrace. Uh, they should have planned better. It was a major breach of the demands. You see, the Eastern world is so much more on hospitality than us in the Western world. Uh, now, we have a little bit of what we call Southern hospitality, but that doesn't touch uh, the Eastern mentality. When, when you had people to come to your home, uh, you were literally to make room for them, give them the very best, let them stay as long as they desired. Uh, uh, very different culture than what we're uh, living in. And, and really, the wedding of those days was different. <clears throat> you know, in our day, uh, the couple gets married, and then they leave town and not seen or heard from again, supposedly, for a week or two as they go on what we call the... Yeah, y'all still on that honeymoon? <laughs> Amen. If not, let Jesus turn the water back into wine. <laughs> Amen. Uh, he ain't finished. Uh, he said this is the beginning of miracles, but it never said he stopped. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and I still need him to turn the water into wine in my life. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and, uh, and in our marriages. Uh, and But yet, when these couples get married, when they got married, uh, they didn't leave for a honeymoon. Uh, they actually stayed for a week, and all the guests were would stay for several days, uh, and they would celebrate the marriage, uh, not just one hour and then leave, but they all celebrated again. So it was a big social disgrace uh, for the, it's a big embarrassment. Uh, uh, and Jesus was moved with compassion, uh, and 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 so he helped them out uh, by not only just turning the water into wine, but making it the best uh, that 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 area had ever had. Uh, and that's exactly what Jesus wants to do in your life. He wants to make the best. Uh, out of a bad situation. I'm glad he had compassion upon me. 
The scripture says, I saw you lying in your own blood, uh, and others passed by you and would not cradle you or supple you. Uh, but when I saw you, uh, I didn't pass by. I stopped and I said, live. Uh, and I suppled you and I nursed you uh, and I had compassion upon you uh, and I made you from nothing uh, and put a robe on you and a ring on your finger. Uh, and I am your God and I am your Savior. And the greatest miracle, one of the greatest miracles uh, is the miracle that he had on us uh, called compassion uh, and his love for us uh, when he was on the cross uh, I was on his mind somebody give the Lord a hand of praise uh, for that miracle of compassion man I've been on empty I, I am empty when it comes to my good works. I have run out of my own grace, and I can't make it to heaven because my 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 wine uh, uh, container has been depleted. It's nothing but old, old filthy water. But oh, let me tell you, at mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty. Where church? At Calvary, the greatest miracle of compassion uh, was on a hill far away, uh, stood an old rugged cross, uh, and he took me and cleansed me, uh, and in effect turned the water into wine in my life. Uh, Hey, the water into wine. Amen. Think about it, church. Uh, he is the compassionate God. Uh, and every now and then we need a new beginning. Amen. There's no greater new beginning than salvation. But have you made a bad decision? Have you sowed some bad seeds? Have you sinned by omission something you should have done as they when they should have prepared for this feast? Well, he is the same miracle worker. And not only does Jesus do something, he does something great. I mean, he goes all out. It says in verse 10, uh, he says this, uh, every man, uh, John chapter 2 and verse 10, every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when is well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. He had compassion upon them. But not only did he have compassion, he gave them extravagant love. Amen? Because he gave them the best at the last. You know, the devil does the opposite. The devil gives you the best at first, and at the end, it's really bad. <laughs> he gives you good wine to start with. You think it's good wine, but at the end, it's sour grapes. And some of you have been on some sour grapes here lately. I can tell by the expression on your face. The devil will give you, oh, yeah, when you when you commit sin, oh, it's, it's fun at, at, in the act of sin. Uh, adultery is fun, uh, the sneaking around and uh, trying to get by, and, uh, and somebody is, uh, is, is, uh, the, the, is attracted to you, and you blah, 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 this, and blah, 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 that, and, the, and, and we think, uh, we, we think we're, we're the young and the restless when we're, when we're old, and, and, and I'm not going to say anything else about that, and, and, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's crazy. He is dumb, and but at the moment it feels good, but the worst comes, and then the shame comes, and then the pain comes, uh, and then the baby you have, you got to pay the bill and the doctor bill and, and all of that. The devil gives you the best first, uh, and at the end he gives you hell forever and forever. Uh, but Jesus is the opposite. You see, the worst is now. The worst is at this moment. The, the worst is at the need. Uh, but then he steps down and he said, I'll take the worst, uh, and I'll make, you the, make it the best for you. Amen. Uh, and he saves the best for last. Hallelujah. Yeah, I deny myself. I say I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to do drugs. I'm not going to. I'm going to be faithful to my wife. I'm going to do all those things. And at the moment, I may suffer a little bit of, uh, of cross. I may suffer a little bit of uh, uh, denying temptation. But later on, I'm going to be greatly rewarded. And friend, take it on out to heaven. You see, in this world, we're going to have tribulation. In this world, we're we're dealing with a lot of dirty water, but I'll tell you one day, we're going into that glorious city where the best is yet to come, and we're going to a place where they're not going to chant about Roe versus Wade. There's not going to be any wicked troubling, and the weary are going to be at rest. He's saving the best for last. You might as well get hold of God. He's got something good for you. Hey, man, would you give him a hand of praise here tonight? Now, how many glasses of wine did he actually make? Six stone jars, 2,000 
400 glasses and 150 gallons of wine. God is an awesome God. You can't quantify the joy of the Lord. You can't put up there the quantity of peace when I go to bed at night knowing everything's all right with me and God. You can't, you can't put a value uh, on, on integrity and holiness uh, and a purity and worship. You can't pay nobody. Psychologists uh, and, and psychoanalysts will try to look at Jerry Nelson and find what in the world causes that man to jump around uh, at 76 years of age. Uh, a Vietnam veteran, most of them are depressed and, and, and are reliving those bad experiences. Uh, you can't put a price. Uh, I'll tell you what happened. God turned the water into wine uh, and it is joy unspeakable uh, and full of glory. And here's the thing. The half has never been told. Uh, somebody thank God for his compassion. Uh, thank God for the miracle. Uh, and he's got the best to come and it's the and it's over more than exceeding uh, and abundantly 2,400 glasses of wine. Uh, it is far and above more. There's enough grace. Uh, there's enough mercy. Uh, there's enough bread in the Father's house and to spare. Uh, I'm living in the overflow. Amen. My cup uh, runneth over. All 2,400 of them. They're running over. I'm filled to the brim. Uh, thank God for the miracle uh, of compassion. Amen. Man. Number two, it was not only a miracle of compassion, it was a miracle of covenant. The new covenant. The new covenant. You think on a deep, see these were Jews. And they knew what Jesus was saying was this, this new wine re replaces the old wine of Judaism. The old wine of Judaism is running out. The blood of bulls and goats. The, the, the old wine of of, of trying to earn salvation, the old wine of the old covenant. And this is new wine. This is the new covenant. And we see the, I got, I almost got into this a minute ago, but when we take communion, <laughs> we take communion, we take the bread and the what? <laughs> And the wine. You see, those Jews knew what he was doing. You see, th there was a message in that miracle. It wasn't just a miracle to razzle-dazzle them. Oh, he's got a little trick up his sleeve. No, there was a message in the miracle. Uh, and and uh, even parables are miracles of instruction. Uh, and even uh, mir uh, uh, miracles are, are, are um, um, even the actual performance of miracles uh, are give us instruction as well. And notice here that that he turned the water into wine. They knew what that symbolized. Uh, the, the Old Testament wedding feast. Uh, uh, look at Amos chapter 9, verses 13 through 14. Look there here. It says in Amos chapter 9, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. And the what? The what? The tread of grapes. That's the winemaker of him that soweth seed. And the mountain shall drop sweet what? <laughs> wine. <laughs> Y'all with me? Go to verse number 14. Uh, and I will I will bring again the captivity of my people. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall what? Plant what? Vineyards. And they'll do what? Uh, drink the wine thereof uh, and make them gardens uh, and the fruit of them. When Jesus turned the water in the wine, uh, he was saying to those Jews, uh, I am the wine maker. Uh, I know those prophecies that said you're going to drink new wine. Uh, you're going to be filled with new wine. Guess what? Uh, you've tried to do it in your own good works. You've tried to do it through the Pharisees and the legalism. Uh, but no, uh, I've come down to heaven uh, and I am the one that can turn the water into wine and fulfill all the prophecies of the covenant. I'm walking in covenant tonight. Amen. It's not how good I perform. I can't turn the water into wine. That's why you shouldn't drink alcohol. People say, well, Jesus turned the water into wine. Well, fill up a glass of water. If he turns it into wine, drink it. But if he doesn't, don't. Amen. I, I believe strongly, strongly that we should not drink alcohol at all, period. End of story. Even casual, casual wine, even little, I don't care how, what does, people say, what about a, a beer? You know, I'm just drinking a beer. What does beer have in it? It has 
alcohol in it. Uh, we're, we're to abstain from the, from the things of this world. And, and people say, well, what about this and what about that? Uh, I'll tell you, if you really taste the new wine, you're not going to want the old. Hallelujah. Nobody in that wedding feast said, mm, this is good. I think I'll take some more of that old. No, sir. But the minute they got a touch of old salvation, uh, they don't want no more Budweiser. They don't want no Micker. They don't want no little sipping saints. Amen. Uh, boy, they got a hold of something uh, that said, I don't need that stuff anymore more. Come on, Pentecostal, sit there if you want to. But this is a good place to shout about. Amen. I've got some new wine. This is a new covenant. Amen. Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. <laughs> Amen, amen. Now, if you're a new convert and you struggle with alcoholism, you know, God will help you and break that habit in your life. Amen. But some of you old converts need to set a good example. Amen. Well, I, I drank it moderately. You might, but you're, you're an influence majorly. <laughs> Your one glass of moderation might be an influence on somebody who can't handle one glass and takes two, and, and we are to be our brother's keeper, and it's just a good idea. In fact, it's a God idea. Let's just drink Pepsi and Coke and, and unsweetened tea and and uh, and water and, and ca uh, coffee, and, and it'd be good to be decaffeinated, amen, uh, uh, for your health, hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9, and in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all the people a feast <laughs> of fat things, uh, a feast of what? <laughs> wine on the leaves, a fat thing full of marrow, wine on the leaves. Well, oh, I'm about to shout glory to God. When he turned the water into wine, and when the governor said, this is the best I've ever had, Isaiah 25, those Jews knew uh, that God was promising uh, the great wine uh, of the new covenant. Look at verse 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over the people and the veil that is spread over nations. Uh, he will swallow up death in victory. The Lord God will wipe tears from all their faces, uh, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. Verse 9, and it shall be said in that day. What day? The day he turned the water into wine. Lo, this is our Messiah. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. When he turned that water into wine, he's saying to them, I'm the one you're waiting for. I'm the Messiah. I am the Lord God. And you ain't seen nothing yet. And I've got joy unspeakable. And I will forgive your sins. I'll take the shame away. And I will be to you almighty God. When we sit there and take the bread and the wine, we're just celebrating the miracle of compassion. The miracle of compassion and the miracle of his covenant. And then finally, the miracle of confidence. Somebody say confidence. You know, miracles kind of help you develop faith. Sometimes the miracle doesn't come instantly. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it takes time. But look at John chapter 2 and verse 11, <clears throat> this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and he what? Manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Now, the book of Acts tells us that there were others who claimed to be the Messiah. And I, don't, I didn't put it up. I, didn't, I just didn't have time to give it up to you. But if you want to look uh, in your own studies in Acts chapter 5, it talks about Theodos who led a revolt with 400 men, and they had been put down. And, and then Judas the Galilean, um, he had risen up, and he said he was the Messiah, and the Romans put him down. And so how do we know? How do we know for sure that this is the Messiah? And those disciples, they knew when he turned that water into wine, they're like, we're on to something because a man cannot do it. Thaddeus couldn't do anything like this. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. And I'm telling you, this is the beginning of miracles. Woo! Meaning there's, that's right, more to come. Tell somebody more to come. Amen. Uh, 
Tell somebody to be continued. Amen. <laughs> Tell somebody to be continued. We need to have confidence uh, in the days of COVID and pandemic and monkey pox and, and chicken pox and, and uh, all of these other things and Biden inflation and all of this turmoil we're going through. And we need to have confidence that we have a God uh, that can put money in our sack. That's what Joseph said. The God of your fathers uh, put money in your sack for the journey. I want you to understand something. Here's my cup. Up, Lord. Uh, and is that what you're going to do? Now listen, if you're already full of the water and you're happy, uh, then you just be happy. Uh, but I want you to know, uh, if you're empty tonight uh, and you need something more than this government can give you, uh, more than the news media can give you, uh, more than some uh, relationship on Facebook can give you, uh, if you'll come tonight with your empty vessel uh, and let him fill you uh, to the brim, uh, to overflowing, uh, he wants to put new wine uh, he wants to bring confidence in your life, confidence in him, confidence in his word, confidence that when we pray, God works and the heavens are shaken and God does mighty things. Can you say amen tonight? Would you stand with me tonight? He is the God of second chances. In fact, I like this, Brother Phillips. Sister Darnell, would you come and sing that song again one more time? Y'all go ahead and cue it up and come on down. I want us to come to the altar. And I want her to, he, he will do the impossible. He is the God of second chances. And I've said this before, he's the God of the second second chance. And by the way, please understand that death is not the end to the believer. Because when we cross over Jordan, or we say goodbye to our loved ones. Judy Skinner, if you're watching here tonight, I see your Facebook post and you're grieving. There's nothing wrong with shedding those tears. But please understand, he turns the water into wine. And there is a place that he says the best. You have saved the best to last. Oh, I'm looking forward to that day. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, now here's the clincher. And Sister Darnell, you can come on up. Here's the clincher. His mother, my mother's here tonight. She thought she was going to get by without me talking about her. <laughs> Amen. It's always good. But, my, but Jesus' mother said this. Do whatever he tells you to do. So why don't you do that to your neighbor? Just say, do whatever the Lord tells you to do. Do whatever the Lord tells you to do. When you do what the Lord tells you to do, Brother VJ Bala, we're going to see those seven miracles. If he says tithe, go ahead and tithe. Amen. If he says forgive, you better forgive. You want that new wine? Come on now. You want that best for the last? Amen. If he says forgive, forgive. If he says shake the preacher's hand, shake the preacher's hand. Amen. If he says stay, stay. If he says go, go. If he says give, give. Uh, if, he says, uh, if he says worship, then worship. Whatever the Lord says to you, do it, uh, and we'll see a miracle of a new beginning. Amen. Come on up. Go ahead and get her started tonight. Would you join me at the altar and let's believe God. Brother Don, I want to believe a miracle for your son tonight. Let's do whatever he says do. Amen. Come on up tonight. Worship the Lord. Get that new wine going tonight. Amen. They say this mountain can be moved. Oh, yes, it can, Lord. They say these chains will never break. Miracle of compassion. But they don't know you miracle like Miracle of the covenant. Do. Confidence. There is power in your name. Come on up, Brother James. We've heard that there is no way through. Oh, I speak a miracle tonight. I speak a miracle. Oh, We've heard the tide the will never change. Oh, they haven't seen what we can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the unmovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe.
we praise you, Lord. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, church. Turn the water in the wine. Worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. There is power in your name. There's so much power. tonight. He's doing it again. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. Come on. He is here. Holy, holy. I will bless his name again. Come on, lift your hands. He is here. Oh, listen. He's calling. Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be. I want you to join hands and pray. Father, right now, turn the water in the wine in these situations. Father, those impossibilities, God, stale, stagnant water that just lasts but for so long. But God, you can make it refreshing wine, the new wine of your covenant, the new wine of your spirit, Lord. Over Westmoreland, let the, the heavens are open, Lord, and the glory is manifesting, God. This beginning of miracles, which means you've never ended, Lord. You're still working miracles. You're still moving moving mountains. You're still saving. You're still delivering. We join hands tonight. And Lord, there's been a resurgence of COVID, and we curse it in the name of Jesus. Uh, keep our family safe. Keep our church safe. Uh, our general conference in Florida, God, we come against any outbreaks and viruses. God, uh, we believe you're going to turn the water into wine. Uh, we give you praise, God. We give you praise tonight. Uh, Amen. Now worship him and just praise him for that new wine. Praise him until you're overflowing. I praise you, Lord. I'm overflowing. <laughs> I'm overflowing tonight in praise and in worship. And we glorify your name. 